All right, here it is, the sexual kung fu diet video. In this video, I'm going to share what I believe to be the most important aspects of eating for maximum vitality and energy levels. This comes from my own personal journey over 12 years of researching nutrition, but most importantly, implementing and experimenting with different things. I've tried all kinds of different extreme diets, fad diets, I've tried vegan, I've tried raw vegan, I've tried keto, all kinds of things. And I'm going to share in this video what personally has worked for me the best, is most sustainable long-term, what gives me the most sexual vitality and day-to-day -day energy levels. Now, I think it's important to share here that diet is a very individual thing. What works for one person may not work for another. We come from unique genetics. We come from unique blood types. Everyone has a unique constitution. And so what works for me may not work for you. I do not believe that diet is a one-size-fits-all approach. And I'm very skeptical about anyone who claims otherwise. With that, let's dive in. Prepping my first meal of the day, well, eating my first meal of the day, just got back from the gym, got back from martial arts class. I'm hungry, it's almost two o'clock. I do intermittent fasting, so I eat from about 2 p.m. to 8, 8.30 p.m. And I eat two fat meals, because I'm on a calorie deficit right now, I'm trying to keep burning fat and building muscle. So I like to eat big meals, but obviously if I eat three big meals a day, I'm gonna get fat. So I have about a 1,000 calorie meal, my first meal, lunch, breakfast, whatever you wanna call it, and then I have about a 1,300 calorie meal in the evening. So I'm doing about 2,300 calories a day right now. So I measure everything, uh, it literally uses a scale. So I know exactly how much of each thing I'm eating. So today I'm having some chicken, some sweet potatoes, some asparagus, some eggs, kind of my go-to first meal, lots of good stuff in here. Loading up eight ounces of chicken, boom. Putting some animal tallow on my pan, that's what I cook with, uh, either that or coconut oil. Again, we want healthy, we want healthy saturated fats and plenty of them. This is really good for hormones. You need saturated fats for hormones. You need cholesterol. Uh, I don't care what the vegans say. I don't care what the American Heart Association, which is owned basically by seed oil companies says, our ancestors ate saturated fats for thousands of years. They didn't have the issues we have now. Why do we all of a sudden have terrible health eating lots of seed oils? Hmm, I don't know. That's the first thing on the sexual Kung Fu diet that is an absolute no-no is seed oil. Seed oils are highly processed. They are superheated above 500 degrees. They're often bleached, deodorized, all kinds of processes. These are unstable oils. Polyunsaturated and trans fats have unstable bonds. What happens to your cells? Because the walls of your cells are made of fats. They need healthy fats to maintain their integrity. When you're eating garbage seed oils, your cells do not bond properly. You have all kinds of issues. They're endocrine disruptors. They're potentially carcinogenic. Literally aldehydes are formed by consuming seed oils. So this is one of the worst things, in my opinion, you can put in your body for sexual health. In general health, I believe that this is one of the main causes of the decline of human health, and especially the main issues people here in the West are having with all kinds of shit. This is kind of fun, I'm just cooking, just fucking ranting, like this is how it is. It's just a day in the life with, with me. You guys just hanging out in my kitchen, we cooking. It's a good time. And if you're wondering what are the most common seed oils, canola oil, soy oil, vegetable oil, which is usually just canola oil, grape seed oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, I highly recommend avoiding these entirely. Don't eat them, don't cook with them, avoid them like the plague. You'll feel much, much better. Another thing I highly recommend avoiding is gluten. Grain products in general, we'll get to that, but gluten, especially uh, here in the West, our wheat supply is pretty much completely contaminated uh, because not only is it a GMO, wheat is highly genetically modified, but it's sprayed with all kinds of garbage, pesticides, Roundup, which contains glyphosate. So people who have celiac disease, it's usually not there's actually a problem with the grain itself. These people can go to Europe where they do not spray and genetically modify their wheat and eat bread and be fine. But our Wheat supply is very contaminated with garbage. Glyphosate is a serious endocrine disruptor, completely wrecks your gut biome, um, and I think it's one of the main causes of a lot of health issues. So absolutely no gluten. And let's get to GMOs. I do not recommend eating any GMOs. I avoid them like the plague. These are bioengineered, chicken's cooking well here. These are bioengineered products. Uh, 
often more difficult for the body to absorb. They often don't have a very good nutritional profile in them. They're often also filled with pesticides and all kinds of shit that is going to wreck your system. Don't do GMOs, kids. Pesticides as well is on that list. Any produce that is sprayed with pesticides is going to be an endocrine disruptor. It's going to disrupt your digestion, wreak havoc on your health in the long term. Eat organic. Unfortunately, even organic products still can use certain pesticides and things. So the best thing to do is to go to a farmer's market to get your produce, talk to the farmers, make sure they don't spray bullshit on them, and uh, avoid pesticides like the plague. Next on the list is phytoestrogens. We're talking soy, flaxseed, anything that mimics estrogen in the body. Now again, I know a lot of the vegans are gonna say, hey, well, soy is not mammalian estrogen. It doesn't register as estrogen in the body. I think that's bullshit personally. I know this because I was vegetarian for seven years. One of my staples was soy, and what do you know? My testosterone levels were garbage. My libido was garbage, fucking garbage. I started eating animal products again, never had more energy, in my life, never had better hormonal balance in my life. What do you do? Listen to your body, ultimately, is the lesson here, but I believe that phytoestrogens should be avoided. All right, now I'm loading up some butternut squash. Man, I love butternut squash. It tastes heavenly. We're gonna get about, oh, we'll do about 200 grams today of the butternut squash. I prep a bunch of this ahead of time so that I can just scoop it up, measure it, throw it on my pan, and eat that shit. This is how I prep cook. I've got my sweet potatoes, fat butternut squash and some red peppers, and this is gonna last me probably all week. These are stainless steel pans, not non-stick because you get a bunch of chemical bullshit from those. Boom. So another thing I highly recommend avoiding is, well, this really goes in tandem with seed oils is fried foods and generally eating out at restaurants most restaurants even like high-end restaurants will cook with canola oil which is complete garbage complete shit it is a number one boner killer so you really want to get used to eating at home more uh don't eat fried foods french fries shit like that like it just completely destroys the nutritional profile it's a boner killer. Don't eat fried foods. And that brings us to alcohol. This is something that I highly recommend avoiding. I haven't touched alcohol in almost eight years now. It makes me feel like shit, uh, but on a dietary sexual vitality level, alcohol is a phytoestrogen. Why do people who drink lots of alcohol, you know, develop the beer belly? Uh, partially because there's a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of calories, and you know, they eat too many calories, and the body accumulates fat. But part of this also is the increase of estrogen in the body. Estrogen makes the body accumulate more fat. Alcohol absolutely wrecks your sexual health. You will feel a million times better if you do not touch alcohol. I guarantee it. Do qigong, do breath work, do meditation to get a buzz. If you're putting poisons in your bodies to get high, you need to check your life, son. Refined sugar is another one I completely recommend avoiding entirely. Disrupts your cell growth. A lot of people believe that it's a, it also feeds potentially uh, certain growths in the body. It starts with the C. That is a, you know, it's a big cause of death. Don't eat refined sugar. Wreaks havoc on your blood sugar levels, your endocrine balance. Sugar is a no-no. All right, now we loading up some asparagus. I'm just bare handing it here. I cooked some yesterday, had some leftover. I love asparagus. Cruciferous vegetables like asparagus help to remove estrogens from the body. Things like broccoli, Brussels sprout, uh, asparagus, of course, which is one of my favorites, binds to the estrogens in your body and removes them from your body. Really great food for improved sexual health. I just wanna give you guys a list of my favorite foods. Some of my favorite foods, which I believe are super sexual superfoods. Sweet potato. I eat sweet potato almost every day. It's one of my main carb sources. Avocados. Love avocado. Grass-fed butter and ghee. Saturated fats. Cholesterol. Boom. Organic fruits and veggies. I don't do a ton of fruit. But I try to eat a couple of fruits a day. For me, it's things like apples, bananas, dates, goji berries, berries in general, mangoes. Some of my favorite veggies are carrots, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, arugula, greens, squash. Love squash. Butternut squash, acorn squash, spaghetti squash, red pepper. I believe red pepper are a superfood. If you roast them, they're amazingly delicious, but they're rich in beta carotenes, which are essentially concentrated gene, I believe, for the body. They're a superfood. Ginger root, I literally eat bites of ginger root throughout the day, especially after a meal. Just... It's delicious. Amazing for your digestion, opens all 12 meridians. 
sexual superfood, baby. I love organ meats, beef liver, kidneys, salmon, wild caught salmon. Don't eat farm raised salmon. It's fed garbage. Chicken is one of my main protein sources, grass fed beef, and some nuts and seeds. I, I try to soak my nuts and seeds, <laughs> soak my nuts before I eat them to improve the digestibility of them. I actually make my own nut butter. My favorite blend so far is pistachio, cashew, walnut, almond, Brazil nut butter. It's phenomenal. Those are my favorite foods. Eggs. Eggs are loaded with saturated fats and cholesterol. I love eggs. These are a superfood, a sexual superfood in my opinion. I can't get enough of them. Of course, I'm only eating two right now, but eggs are amazing. You want to get the egg yolk. That's what has the cholesterol. That's what has that healthy fat in it. Make sure you're getting pasture raised eggs because most commercial eggs are, you know, if you've ever seen these cages, the chickens live in, they're horrific. It's inhumane. They put these animals in these tiny little cages. They can't move around. They don't get any sun. That is not a healthy chicken. It's not going to lay a healthy egg. You know that your eggs are good when they have dark orangish yolks. It means that the chicken is getting sun. It's getting vitamin D. It's eating a healthy diet. You will get much more nutrition from your eggs. You want to get plenty of protein in your diet because amino acids are the essential building blocks of the body. I doubled my protein intake about a, uh, over a year ago when I was starting to cut some body fat. I mean, look at my videos from February 2022. I was, I was a little chunky. I've lost 30 something pounds of fat since then. And one of the ways I did this was by upping my protein intake and watching my macros in coordination with this, my, my carbs and my fats. Getting plenty of protein in your diet will help you to have more energy and you'll feel more satiated and fuller, less likely to binge on shitty foods. So get enough protein. I recommend if you're an active physical person, for every pound of body weight, I recommend eating a gram of protein. So I weigh about 156 right now, 156 pounds. So I eat at least 156 grams of protein every day. And finally, I recommend having fiber in your diet, enough healthy fiber. I know that the carnivores and the keto people, because they're constipated as fuck, <laughs> we'll, we'll say otherwise, but I believe having a moderate amount of healthy fiber is really, really important for good bowel movements. Get things moving. If you're not pooping as much as you're eating, basically, it means that your intestines are clogged up. You're going to have problems at some point. So for me, fibers, you know, I love apples. I eat an apple every day, organic, of course, veggies, you know, get your fiber, kids. So here's an important thing I'll talk about, which is digestion. It doesn't matter what you're eating if you're not digesting it properly. If you don't have at least two, even better, is three well formed poops every single day, your system might be fucked over time. Listen to this, those of you on the carnivore and keto diet. Constipation is very, very common on these diets and that is a huge problem eventually. Getting good amount of healthy fiber in your diet is important. I highly recommend taking probiotics and enzymes. Take a probiotic every day and take an enzyme with every meal. This has been my go-to enzyme, Multizyme from Standard Process. I'll link this or something similar in the description. I've used different enzymes before. This is my go-to probiotic, Rootery. This one can survive the harsh conditions of your stomach acid to get the good stuff in there. This is another one if you have poor digestion that can help. Uh, hydrochloride, this won't be for everyone, but if you're low in stomach acid, this can really help amp up your digestion. I also eat some uh, kimchi or sauerkraut, fer fermented vegetables with everything I eat. This is natural probiotic to get the good bacteria. Keep my digestion really good, baby. Your body's only as healthy as your sewage system, your plumbing system. So again, if you're not pooping well, if you're backed up, you're going to have issues. I recommend doing colonics, doing coffee enemas, things like this to really flush out your pooper so you can poop like a champion. I have poops like you wouldn't even believe, son. <laughs> oh man. Pan's good. Let's cover it up and let it do its thing. I'm ready to eat. So this is one of my typical meals, one of my first meals of the day, post-workout, intermittent fasting, ready to load up with some protein and fuel. I've got eight ounces of chicken. I've got 200 grams of butternut squash with some ghee on there, a teaspoon of ghee. I've got two eggs, about a cup of asparagus, half an avocado, some arugula, and I've got some hot sauce to pour on it all. So it's about a thousand calorie meal, absolutely delicious. Everything's proportioned and measured, and I use my Fitness Pal app to track my macros so I can stay on my fat burning and muscle building goals. If you want me to make a video on how I cut fat and built muscle, let me know in the comments below. So before I eat, and I recommend everyone do this, I put my hands over the food and just, there's a couple things here. First, I feel like you're beaming energy into your food. Send gratitude into the food, all the energy it took to grow this food, 
to bring it to me right now, just feeling gratitude for that. And also, there's these meridians, energy meridians that end in your fingers. It will connect your chi, your body's energy, with the food that you eat. It will attune it to your body so that you can absorb it properly. It's good practice to do. All right, I'm ready to destroy this meal, guys. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Enjoy and have a great day. Hot sauce, baby. Boom.